Hello, uh, family. Uh, hello, church. I want to welcome you. Welcome you to our devotional. This is uh, week number four. I hope you are gathering with your soup. If you made a soup to uh, to share with someone, um, if you receive a soup from someone, um, I hope you are ready to study the word. We're going to be reading from chapter 42 of Isaiah, verses 1 to 9. So if you have your Bible, this is the time for you to open up your Bible. Use that Bible. Make notes. Um, underline, you know, have questions. Um, I hope that you get to do this. Uh, we have one more week, then we enter into Holy Week, and uh, that's a time for us to reflect on the um, great commandment that the Lord gave us through uh, washing uh, the uh, feet of the disciples, um, but also on Good Friday, inviting us to, re, um, to, to uh, respond to the action of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. So, um, And then the great celebration on Easter morning. So um, again, one more week of devotional next week, and then we enter into Holy Week. Uh, announcement. This is uh, for all the people that sometimes do not come to church uh, worship because they did not register. Okay, uh, we're not doing registrations anymore. I talked to council and we say that instead of doing registration, you can just show up and as you come in, there's gonna be people in the entrance taking your temperature, um, giving you sanitizer, and also giving you your uh, personal individual communion to you so we can do uh, communion in there. Um, but those people are gonna be taking your name. We have your contact unless you know we have a new visitor there and we don't have a contact, we're gonna ask him for their phone number. So in case that we need to contact people back, we have those numbers. So we do not need to um, register anymore for Sunday mornings, um, but do uh, make the time to be here with us. We continue to do social distances as we are in our church. So as you come in onto the left, that's first service area, two uh, of the uh, um, pews, rows are for us for first service. And then on the right, that's on the left, on the right, as you come in, we have for second service. So there's two rows as well for second service. So what I wanna, you know, I wanna emphasize today um, through this reading from Isaiah chapter 42, um, we're still dealing with a lot of things that we can't change ourselves, and, and we're not gonna change them until we give them to the Lord. Um, there is a lot of times where we say, change, Lord, change me. And we give it, and then we take it back. It's that we enter in, we enter into this time of giving and taking, giving and taking. Right? We trust the Lord, but then we take it. Uh, I think it's time to completely give it to the Lord, and uh, and whatever that is, you know, there is areas in our life that God can still do a miracle. There is areas in our life that God can still make a change, um, but God will not make that change unless we give that to the Lord. Okay, so Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 42 um, is, is given to the people through the prophet Isaiah. Um, and this word brings hope to the people that have come from the exile. This is uh, 700 years before uh, Jesus was here on earth. And um, the prophet Isaiah was talking about this good news, this new covenant that the Lord was establishing through Jesus Christ. So those, this is what that is. Okay, so I invite you to take a moment to reflect on this word and underline and, and, and look at it um, from the understanding of where the people were at that time coming from the exile onto Jerusalem and getting back into a normal life, right? And uh, you can reflect on that too, because yeah, we're coming to a normal life again. It's gonna take a while, but you know, we need God through this time as well, because yes, there is a lot of people with the vaccine, but there's a lot of people without the vaccine. So we have to be careful um, with those that have not been vaccinated, right? So we are slowly coming to the normal. So these people slowly were coming into, the, but they needed some hope, which is what we need as well. We need hope. We need to know that things can be better. And the only way that they can be better is if we just bring it into the Lord. So I want to invite you for a little bit to look at chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant begins this chapter. Here is my servant. Monday, Thursday. Remember what happened Monday, Thursday? Jesus came, washed people's disciples, uh, uh, feet the, of the disciples, and send them out to serve one another, to love one another. 
as Jesus did and to do likewise. You know, a lot of times we look for Easter. We love Easter celebration and we just go really quick through Monday, Thursday and Good Friday. Why? Because Monday, Thursday is inviting us to do something we are uncomfortable. To forgive, to love everyone, to serve one another when we want people to serve us. And so we just want to jump onto Easter. And Good Friday, mm, you know, we, need, we see the sacrifice Jesus did on the cross. You and I know what Jesus went through. And that invites us to respond to that love. And how do we respond to that love? The same way, doing the sacrifices that Jesus did for us. We can do it for others. We can do it for the Lord. And doing and respond, do, loving God and loving others the same way that Jesus loved us, right? So one invites us to live this way. And the other one invites us to actual practice as we celebrate the victory over death. That as we see the power of God over death, right? So verses 1, here is my servant. Who I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. Yeah. These words is not the first time we see, we, we hear them, we hear them before. Okay. This, these words were pronounced at Jesus' baptism. But these words were written 700 years before Jesus was on earth. Right. The prophet was talking about this moment where the Holy Spirit was going to come upon this servant of the Lord. And the voice came down from heaven. This is my son in who I, I am delighted. This is my chosen one. Listen to him. I have put my spirit up on him. We know, we see that story. We've, we've seen, uh, we've heard that story. He will bring forth justice to the nation. He will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it hard in the streets. A bruised, bruised reed he will not break. A dimly burning weak, uh, weak he will not quench. He, he will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. You know, Palm Sunday is a great celebration for us because we, we exclaim, we lift up Jesus as our King. We sing Hosanna, right? But a lot of times we, we do it as a, as a habit. That's what we do on Palm Sunday. But if you reflect on that, you know, Jesus came as our King. And, and as our King, He established something different, something something so different. His justice was not the justice that people were waiting for. His justice was to save all people from our sins. It was different. Look what it says after that. He established justice on earth and he constant coastal land wait for his teaching that thus says God the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out who spread out the earth and what comes from it who gives bread to people upon it and spirit and spirit to to those who walk in it I am the Lord I have called you in righteousness and have taken you by the hand and kept you I have given you as a com covenant to the people these words are given to Jesus. This is what God is talking about. Jesus, I took you. I am Lord. I have called you in righteousness. And I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I've given you as a new commandment. Remember those words every Sunday. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Check for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. We'll repeat that over and over every Sunday as we get together and celebrate communion. That's the new covenant Isaiah is talking about that was God establishing through Jesus Christ. This I have given you as a co covenant to the people, a light to the nation. We talk about Jesus being our light in our lives to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, who's, those who sit in the darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other. 
nor my praises to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things now declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. God still doing things in our lives and wants to change things that we have no control over on our own. We need God. You need God for those areas in your life that still need change. 40 days of transformation, of spiritual transformation. We're talking about that over and over because we take this time through prayer, through fasting, through giving. This is a time to give those areas in our lives that we have no control over and say, Lord, here they are. You know, where people were wondering who Jesus was. And as John the Baptist was asking, go ask him and see if he is the Messiah. This is what he says on Luke 7, the Gospel of Luke chapter 7, verse 22 and 23 says, And he answered Jesus, and Jesus answered to them, Go and tell John that you have seen and heard the blind receive their sight. The lame walk, the leper are cleansed, the deaf heard, and the death are raised. The poor have good news brought to them, and blessed is anyone who take no offense at me. Those words that Jesus is talking, those are the words of Isaiah. The 700 years before him had been prophesied that he was going to be doing those things. And guess what? God's still doing those things right now in our lives. And your life can do the same. So if there's an area in your life that you you still need work, that you, that you, you still need God to help you change, give it. This 40 days, this Lenten time is for God. So you can give it to the Lord. There is, it could be something so simple or it could be something very complicated. Either way, give it. To the Lord and the Lord will change you as the psalmist and as we read on uh, Ash Wednesday give us O oh Lord a new heart keep continuing that prayer asking God to change your heart over and over may God bless you as you continue on this journey enter into what Holy Week is and what it means for us which is invite us to live a life loving God and loving one another but also in Good Friday as it reminds us what Jesus did on the cross for us and so we celebrate on Easter morning the power and the mighty that God has even over death so if God has power over the lame, over the blind, over the deaf, God still can do things in your life and can change those areas that you still need work. Blessings as you continue to pray that and ask God to help you. Blessings as we continue through our Lent one more week and then we will have the celebration of Holy Week. God bless you and let me uh, close in prayer and I will see you Sunday, 9 a.m. Do not have to register anymore. Let us pray. Dear Lord, yes, give us a new heart. Change our heart. Only you can do those things. I pray, Lord, that you be with the people that are here right now. I pray, Lord, that you be with the people that are uh, uh, going to be with us. I pray with those and for those that still need change in their lives and that you are the only one that can make those change i ask you lord to bless them to help them to be with them to give them the strength to give them the vision to give them the power that they need to go in a different direction the direction that you have for for them help us lord to continue to be holding your hand walking with you and always looking to do your will in all the things that you have in front of us. We pray for the sick. We pray for those that are in need. We pray for the families that we pray every morning and every day that you be with them. Thank you so much, Lord. And we pray always in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. And I hope to see you Sunday, 9 a.m., 11 o'clock in Spanish. 
and do not need to register. Adios.